This episode of the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast is brought to you by the Podcast Reach System. Are you ready to exponentially reach more profitable customers? Launching and hosting your own show is your proven best solution for networking, client attraction, and establishing your celebrity expert brand. Visit www.podcastreachsystem.com and claim your rightful place as the leading star of your industry so you make a difference for your community, market, and audience. Welcome to the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast. Join us as we celebrate entrepreneurs, business creators, and brilliant minds who reveal what they are doing to make the world a better place by being part of it. Be sure to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now sit back, lean in, tune in, get your notepad and two pens ready, and let's get started. My name is Adam Homie. I am your host, and I am honored by your wise decision to tune in and invest in yourself today. We are here right now speaking with Darren Chablock, known as Dr. Dunn, the team building and team management coach. What Darren does is he works with established business owners who want world-class results, hiring a first virtual assistant, or expanding a team. And is that the quintessential question? Uh, is the creator of the Reach System, which works with entrepreneurs to launch in po their podcasts, one of the top questions I get is, uh, who can I hire to edit? <laughs> Within the Reach System, part of our goal is to help you mitigate or eliminate your need to edit. But even that leaves post-production, splicing on your intro and outro bumpers, getting that episode posted to your dedicated podcast website so that it automatically springs out and navigates through the syndication networks, getting you those search engine backlink benefits. And the key to making that work, and this is one of the great blessings I have in my business, is the production team that mm -hmm. does that piece for me. Yep. And that's actually the initial conversation Darren and I had that yep. led to him joining us on the Brilliance Plus Passion Project today. So first question, yep. how does the work you do make the world a better place for your clients, customers, and the world at large? Well, it's a good question. And you, you kind of touched on it already, Adam. It's the uh, outsourcing lifestyle that really kicks in once you get someone to do those um, day-to-day -day, like intros and outros and edits yeah. things you don't want to spend time doing that after you've done them about 20 100 times yeah so it just makes the outsourcing lifestyle i enjoy it uh more of it myself yeah so what exactly is it that you do well i i've been outsourcing for many many years 17 years and i finally last year did it for another company and it went very well and okay. I got a case study on it. And what I do is I put together uh, very highly productive virtual assistants for my clients. And I have a, a 90 day coaching program that includes one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is very, very uh, time consuming. So it's, and I do a bunch of done for you work also. I set up project management and, uh, uh, team management software and training program. So I do a lot of a lot of work for my clients. Right. So you run sort of a gamut when it comes to the outsourcing piece. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, because you know, my experience um, with some of the entrepreneurial teaching on outsourcing is is there's this person they're a solopreneur and yeah. they're pretty much tapped out on what they themselves can do. So they attend somebody's magic industry groundbreaking webinar on how to leverage your team. And within an hour, they uh, are in the process of hiring a copywriter, webmaster, a digital marketer, three interns to manage the social media, a bookkeeper, a CPA, a financial advisor, a wealth advisor, a housekeeper. Yeah. And uh, they don't 
even know what they're planning to do with all that stuff. They were just told yeah. they need one. Like, yeah. uh, like for example, the big one I hear is webmaster. Okay, that's a very broad term. Yeah. And what does that what does that really mean, uh, especially in the era where websites don't need the same type of maintenance they used to? And yeah. if you want to make changes to them, it's often just a global setting rather than have to go back and manually add things. And yeah. hey, links are always in a break, but now it's easier than ever to just go in and fix them. Uh, so, and then what is a social media manager? Okay. Which social media? Because you got LinkedIn, you got Facebook, you got Instagram, you got Twitter, you got um, Clubhouse. We can count that as social media. Yeah. Every single one of those, plus the 20 yeah. other ones I didn't think to mention, have a different strategy. It's not you just open up 20 links and paste, 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 paste because that's a great way to fail. So what is a social media manager? What is that social media manager going to do? Are they going to do my awareness marketing? Are they going to do my content marketing? Are they going to... Uh, replicate my conversations for me, so I don't have to do the nitty gritty of that. And if so, do they speak my language, meaning mm -hmm. my voice? Yeah. Uh, are they going to be doing uh, prospecting to fill my calendar? What's it gonna be? Yeah. So this is where we need folks like you. Uh, now, in your experience, where are the three most commonly qu asked questions? The FAQs do you get from folks who are working on their process of deciding to work with you? Well, three common questions I get, Adam. Um, how do I know if they're going to work? If, if yep. uh, how much does it cost, and what country are they from? That's like getting into a cab and saying, calling the cab company. Oh, what country is the cab driver from? You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, okay. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm I'm going to indulge just because it's the elephant in the room, and if I didn't, we might get comments on this down below. Uh, what country does the cab driver come from? I think because I actually think this is a serious point because I'm because I'm going back to the cliche that a lot of people who are cab drivers are immigrants. Okay, yeah. Yeah. that actually pause. That equally applies to who you outsource your business to, mm -hmm. whether they are native to the country you come from. Yeah, is not in and of itself in any way, shape, or form an indicator of whether they can effectively serve you. Yeah. So yeah. when you get in the taxi, you get in a taxi and uh, you uh, discover that your taxi driver may have what to you sounds like an accent mm -hmm. because you speak differently than they do for whatever reason. Yeah. Are they still going to get you to your destination in a timely fashion without putting your life at risk? Exactly. The answer to that is 99.99999% of the time, yes. Mm -hmm. So does it really matter if the person who is doing your initial nurturing conversations from a different country, as long as they can voice you in your personality effectively? Yeah. No, doesn't matter. If it, does it matter? Does it matter if they speak your language at all, as long as they can read it and follow your instructions to put your podcast episodes up? You bet, Adam. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I, I know that that's a bit of a, oh, my goodness. He said, what approach? But I wanted, because <laughs> there was an elephant in the room there, and I yeah. wanted to reach up and pat that elephant and say, yes, you have an important contribution to make here. And, you know, maybe stroke the trunk a little bit and hope it doesn't wrap it around my neck and say, ah, <laughs> you big bug. <laughs> <laughs> now, with all that being said, what are three questions you wish people would ask? Well, um, three questions that I wish people would ask, um, can you tell me about your vetting and selection process is one of them, yeah. you know, and because uh, I take great pride in that. And it's a it's a one month process to hire someone or a team. Yep. And the other question is, um, do you have any case studies? I would like to hear that would be I hear that actually, but not a lot. Uh -huh. um, and what type of coaching do you do? Because, you know, there's different kinds of coaching. There's group coaching, one-on-one, -on -one, do-it-yourself, a combination. So people don't – a lot of people don't know about that, and it's actually very important. Yeah, very much so, and, um, and I'm glad you bring these uh, issues to the fore. Now, uh, this is all good to know, and this is the part where we're about halfway through and we switch to the part where it's a bit of fun. This is where people get to know – the yeah. real Darren Chablock. <laughs> First question in this section. What would folks who know you be yeah. surprised to learn about you? 
people that know me that would be surprised to learn about me is, well, um, I've made mistakes even in this industry. I, about 10 years ago, one, one time I hired a virtual assistant and I had to let him go. I had to, you know, like, like fire him. And, yeah. and uh, it's not fun. It's, it's, I don't enjoy doing that, but I'm, you, you got to do what you got to do. And, 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 and we just follow the process. So I let him go. Uh, you just late all the time and gave him many chances. And what happened, long story short, Adam, is this guy made a fake, he loved his, he loved working for me. So he made a fake profile and he reapplied for the position. And <laughs> yeah, you already know what happened. I hired him. I hired him back. Oh, oh yeah. this, is, this sounds like one of those Reddit stories. Uh, we fought, we fired that wait we fired that waitress three years ago, and yeah. we ended up rehiring her because she got married, divorced, what have you. Her name changed, yeah. and uh, she and her hair was now pink instead of orange. Exactly. So uh, we didn't color. realize it, we didn't realize it was the same person the until hair that moment. Got me, Adam. It got until, me. Yeah, until that moment. That she went up to the table and she pulled out her pad. Yeah. And then we knew. Yeah. Uh, so, what, yeah. What my intellectual junk food are those silly Reddit stories. I find them humorous and entertaining. So we now, we now do video interviews. It's mandatory in the vetting yeah. process. So, yeah. I learned that a long time ago now. Yeah, it makes sense. But he uh, made a mistake. He actually accidentally used his real name in an email one time. And I was like, oh, man, this is not – no way, you know. Whoa. I was, I was <laughs> Darren, what do you hope people say about you when you're not around to hear it? When I'm not around? Um, well, I, I hope that it's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or at least I hope it's true. Yeah. If it's not good, as long as it's true. Okay. So, so, it's, so it's a matter of like the uh, context and the value. Yeah, I hope, I hope it's true. Right. If if you can go, it, go ahead. I thought you were gonna. I thought you had more to say. Well, it, as long as it's it's true, because I've seen some stuff that was not true one time, and, and it kind of hurt. But uh, it, positive, if it's if it's feedback, I, I'm appreciative whether it's good or bad. Yeah, absolutely. So, if you could go back in time and change one thing you've done or one thing that's happened with you, what would it be and why? Um, I would make more mistakes. I would I would make more mistakes faster so I can get ahead quicker. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually I actually cover that in my book Groundhog Day is an event not a business strategy. Uh, there's an entire sub section there called fail early, fail often. I like that. Which goes back to that same thing. Um, it tells a story of a person I knew who was a supervisor in a in a call center who was counseling an employee and uh, and what he finally said to get through that employee is he said, "Look, the reason I'm a manager and you're a call center rep is because I've made a lot more mistakes than you. Exactly. Yeah. Very, very good. I understood it perfectly. So uh, yeah. What famous person alive or dead would you like to meet? And what questions would you have for them if you had this opportunity? Well, I, I'm currently in a, co I actually paid for coaching this year with uh, a, a well-known individual. I'm not here to, 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 to promote it or anything, but it's okay. I, I, I would like to meet the coaching team who's who I paid business coaching for. They're pretty amazing. And and there's a lot of people I'd like to meet, but I've been spending a lot of time uh, with this particular yeah. family of business owners. And I it, it's uh, Tanner Chidester and his brothers. And, yep. uh, and I know who you're talking about. I, I'd like to meet them, actually. I, I, I went and I paid the to get into the mastermind. And yep. it's it's worked quite well for me. And it'd be nice to meet them, actually. So it's a matter of the people you already deal with. You'd like yeah. to elevate that connection with an in-person connection. So that's the way you're yeah. interpreting my question. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense. What motivates you and keeps you going when you're well, having a tough time or facing a challenge? Adam, I read every day. I read, I drink from good books every day. Like, mm -hmm. like the book that I, I want to actually want to read your book now since I've seen it. I, I order books. And I read them. I'm reading a book on trust right now. I, I met a guy in a forum. I bought his book. He's from Southern USA. He wrote a book on trust. He's got a PhD. It's incredible. Very good book. Wow, that's that's fantastic. I I, I think that think that's you know kind of inspiring. I myself 
love to read. Uh, you know, I, I love to tell I like to tell the story. I was persuaded to check out Clubhouse back when you could not log into Clubhouse with an Android device. And I am an Android guy. I have a Google Pixel 3 XL. I'm not getting a freaking iPhone. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. So, but what I did do is I went and got an iPad because I thought, yeah, I don't have a tablet. I have other things I could use it for. And now a few weeks ago, Clubhouse uh, finally got their Android app up and running. Ooh. So now I can do and I can do my Clubhouse through my Google Pixel 3 XL, which is how I always wanted it. So I look at this tablet and I'm thinking, this makes a hell of a book reader. <laughs> so I saw, so I, so I, so I mean, this is something I can take with me. It's lightweight if all I'm doing is going somewhere to read. And it's not a book that I decide I wanted a physical copy of yet. So, uh, you know, a lot of times, and I'll be sitting down in a cigar shop, and I'll just be kind of quiet. I'll be looking at my tablet, or maybe I'll have my laptop, or maybe I'll even have my Google Pixel 3 XL. It's like, what are you doing? It's like, oh, I'm just reading some books. And that's what I'm doing. I'm reading some books. Yeah, so, um, so I agree with you. Drink that knowledge. Drink that positivity through books. Now, finally, and I know you have something you want our listeners to do as far as clicking on a link, and I'm going to explain that to them in just a second. I actually didn't, right finish, now, the, uh, I didn't finish the PDF today, but the, I'll have it. They can go on a waiting list, and I'll get it to them next week. Actually, I'm about to explain how they can still get the PDF regardless of when they take the action, yeah. whether it's today, tomorrow, or seven years from now. Okay. This is the beauty of redirects, which is going to be a nice little bonus lesson as we wrap up our conversation here, because I already knew that. Uh, but in general, before I send them down this exciting rabbit hole, it's going to have lots of carrots in it. What is one action that you would recommend our listeners take today? One important action, and I did I did make a note on that, uh, Adam, one important action. Uh, it's one of my favorite quotes, which leads to an action, and I'll explain it. If you do what most people are not willing to do, you will have what most people will never have. So go do the hardest, most difficult thing first every day. Uh, it's a challenge uh, until you outsource it, of course. For most of us, it gets us. Uh, one of the most difficult things for me is sales. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really good at it, but I'm learning. And and uh, but I have to focus on it every day. Do a little bit every day, you know. Just okay. Yeah. So because. Uh, we uh, missed the part about the value of the pre-interview green room where Darren was supposed to give me a heads up about, I'm just teasing, but actually this is a lesson for all podcasters is it doesn't matter whether you fail to ask the question. It doesn't matter whether your guests fail to volunteer the information. What matters, and this is a key component of the podcast reach system, is you have a set of tools in your toolbox that you can smoothly handle anything. So I'm actually giving you a little bit of a behind the curtains peak at effective podcast hosting that wasn't even planned. This was this was unforced. This was an absolute oopsie. And that's why I went into that. I'm going to reveal something. So what Darren wants you to do, and he told me this beforehand, is he wants you to go you to go to Dr. Dunn, D-R-D-O-N-E dot com. Now, depending on when you visit there, you may find a Facebook group or you may find a PDF download with value in it where the subsequent invitation is to join a Facebook group. I know I'm joining that Facebook group. So, and the value of having online marketing, and I say this so often and I don't get to say it nearly enough, however, on podcasts is when you are dealing with creating online assets, it's a website, not 50,000 printed brochures you're now stuck with. Yeah. So today, Dr. Dunn may go to a Facebook group. It may go to a PDF. But I'm telling you that when you go to that link, you're going to find both of those things one way or another and possibly more. Mm -hmm. So I invite you all go to drdunn.com and get it done. With that, <laughs> Darren Chablick, thank you so much for being with Thanks, us today. Adam. It's been an honor and an education. Thank you so much for having me. 
Thank you for tuning into the Brilliance Plus Passion podcast, where we celebrate entrepreneurs, business creators, and brilliant minds who are making a difference for their community, market, and audience. Remember to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast. Oh,